Hey everyone, welcome to a rousing episode of Was That In Good Taste? I'm one of your hosts and my name is going to be Chandler Phillips. And with me as always... I'm James Beery. How you doing? I am doing ter frickin' rific because we got one of my favorite little candies that we're going to be Was That In Good Tasting today. And before we get into the grand theme of the episode, we want to tell you to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff that keeps us rolling Rolling, rolling, keeps us rolling, 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 rolling. You know you'd be loving this. L-I-M-P biscuit is right here. You know what they say? They said if you don't care, you don't care. <laughs> you know, Limp Biscuit had such a stronghold in my uh, youth. Like when I was, when I was probably six. I would, I would step in and hear my dad listening to Limp Bizkit, step into the garage and just be like, this shit bangs. That was like my first album. Like, Limp, Was Limp Bizkit? No, I wouldn't say my first album, but when my, mo- my mother worked near the World Trade Center, the first time when I was like 13 or 14, she was like, oh, I really need, I want to get you a CD, right? So I got the Blink-182 self-titled, and I got Ooh. Limp Bizkit's Results May Varied. That's a good With, one. um, was like, hey, you, Mrs. Don't Know What the Fuck Your Name Is, I'm Drawn to You, Something's Magnetic Here, If I Could Approach You or Even Get Close to the Scent That You Left Behind, I'd Be Fine. Oh, God, I must love that shit. Was that one that you'd, like, listen on repeat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, my... And Behind Blue Eyes. Oh, Him that's a good poor, one. Him poorly singing. Oh. <laughs> It's a good cover. It's a good cover. Behind blue eyes. Behind. Um, I think no one, one of my knows what it's like <laughs> to be the bat man. I was just thinking that. Where are they? <laughs> I think one of my first albums I had. It's it's one of these four, and I had a collection that I can remember. It was, uh, Britney Spears' debut album. The the one that had oh, yeah 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 yeah, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. it it was Ricky Martin, and then it explains was, a lot. And then it was because uh because uh v- living La Vida Loca, fucking banger. Not to mention she bangs she bangs, um and then uh Shania Twain, the one that had like uh that don't impress me much, um and then finally it was uh Backstreet Boys, the the. Debut album for Backstreet Boys. Hey, everybody. Yeah. I feel like, but were those, because mine, this is like a little, you know, that was me picking an album. I had albums oh. before that. I had TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool. I had Sabotage's album. You know what I mean? I had yeah. things like that, but like for me to pick. I, mm, I don't. You know, I can't quite recall if it was something that I picked or something that was just thrust upon me or whether or not, irregardless, <laughs> I listened to the shit out of those albums. Um, and also, an integral part of my childhood was eating little Jelly Belly candies that we have on display for you today, which is going to be... The focal point of our topic, de jour. Ooh, ah, wow. oh. don't don't spill them. You'll bust a belly. Um, so Jelly Bellies. Fun fact: the Jelly Belly Factory is only but a forty-five minute drive from my hometown of Sacramento. Oh. It's in uh, Fairfield. It's on one Jelly Belly Drive. No, Jelly Belly Lane. Um. In Fairfield, California, established in 1986, and Jelly Bellies have kind of been an integral part of uh, so many of my field trips and just general goings outings um, in in uh, in my youth. And so I thought it would be a fun thing to uh, well, one, I got some some of these uh, novelty Jelly Bellies in my uh, Christmas haul this year. 
and um, I thought it'd be fun to kind of try them out. We have specifically the Cocktail Classics Jelly Belly Collection, and um, I thought it'd be fun to uh, take some of these Jelly Bellies and add them into various glasses of a neutral spirit and allow them to infuse, and then you and I are going to try them and say, are these classic cocktail like is it a cocktail in a jelly belly is it as they say in belly culture true to life flavors it's so interesting because i feel like jelly beans are definitely one of the more less appreciated fruits fruit <laughs> <laughs> i feel like people don't like jelly beans um, as a candy do you just call jelly beans a fruit <laughs> they're obviously a legume they're obviously a legume um one of the things that's super interesting is that the these kind of either seasonal or branded or you know flavored jelly bean mm-hmm. is really popular. You know, uh, I think the Birdie Bots every flavored beans was really popular with the Powderheads in the early two thousands. Oh, we're gonna get into those. You know, oh, oh, we are know. gonna get into those. So you know, I'm first of all, which ones do we have here? So we have a pretty fun selection. We're going to start going, uh, what's this? Um, Right to left. (laughs) Uh, Over here we have mimosa flavored, followed by gin and tonic, and then cosmopolitan, pomegranate, sorry, pomegranate cosmo, and then mimosa, and uh, uh, what is it? Margarita, right? Margarita. I was going to say closing us out. Is gonna, I just couldn't think of the transition word of closing us out. Is <laughs> gonna be margarita on the end over here, um, and so initially, initially, I thought it would be fun if like we made each and every cocktail of these and tried them like back to back, having the jelly bean and the cocktail. But as it turns out, that's a lot of cocktails. <laughs> that that's a lot of cocktails that's a hard that's uh, five cocktails that's five cocktails that's that's a hard episode to walk away from you might be stumbling out of here tequila simple syrup grenadine um uh, ginger beer and you can do a moscow mule or a mexican mule so you can do vodka or you can do tequila i'm actually privy to a mezcal mule myself i like a i like a little smoky burro a Cosmo, which of course is we had before. Oh my God, why my brain is not working? Why can't we was it a Cosmo right now? <laughs> it's um, vodka, lemon juice, and I want to say uh, grenadine is what gives it that Cosmo mix, delightful uh, pink hue, and then um, mimosa, which is, is orange juice and prosecco. Yeah, that's that which is what I really wanted. That's that that. <laughs> That one kind of broke your heart. It definitely did. <laughs> it definitely did. My heart's broken. Of course. Last but not least, margarita. margarita. Um, and this is this is actually kind of gorgeous. I love the way that these have infused into our various liquors. Um, you want to just go ahead and try them side by side, and I guess and that's what we're it? doing so far. Uh, okay, this is super fun. I love this. Remember, I want to know right now in the comments below. Which one do you think, what we did is we took five jelly beans, we put them inside a vodka, let them sit. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't macerate them. We didn't muddle them. We just took them and we did this. We swirled them. We swirled them a good amount. We gave them a good swirly. So one of the things I'm wondering is, are we going to be getting just the food coloring on the outside? Or if any of the sugar is broken down. So I guess we're going to be starting first with mimosa. Let's start it off with mimosa. And while you're pouring it up, I'm going to tell you some fun Jelly Belly fun facts as to why uh, doing a um, vodka infusion with Jelly Bellies is not so crazy as doing like a gummy bear infusion. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to do a gummy bear infusion or a gumdrop infusion, but a lot of the time it either dissolves the gelatin because the, uh, the alcohol breaks down or, or it doesn't like the, I think, wait, now I'm getting my things mixed up. 
alcohol does not necessarily dissolve gelatin. And so what ends up happening is you end up with like a lot of the food coloring gets leached out, but the gummy bears themselves kind of just plump up like as if you were to put raisins in water and then they, you know, turn back into grapes. The out the, in the middle parts end up getting dissolved out and the, the 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 gummy bears end up taking on a little bit of the vodka but also they're just getting big they're just getting, because they're falling apart a little bit they're getting bit. swole really they're they're working out they're getting their gains um but the uh the interesting part about jelly beans in general is uh their lineage can act as a candy can be traced back centuries so the innard part of the uh, jelly bean is actually made of um, what we know now as Turkish Delight. So Turkish Delight is a confectionery made that originates from um, the Cyprus, Anatolia, Turkey, just Eastern Mediterranean region. And it is made with sugar and starch. And that's how a uh, gelatinous, it's not made with any gelatin. And Jelly Belly um, uh, has it very clear on their on their website that it is not made with any dairy, not made with any gelatin, and it is vegetarian and vegan friendly. Um, it says vegetarian friendly because you know some of the flavors like buttered popcorn are, as they say in Jelly Belly terms, true to life. Uh, flavors, which means they derive their actual flavors from buttered popcorn, which would include butter, mm -hmm. which, as we know, is a dairy product. But none of these have any dairy products in them. So, with that said, because jelly bellies, jelly beans in general, are made with sugar and starch and not with gelatin. That is why they are able to dissolve in alcohol. Ain't that just a little fun little fucking fact? Ain't that interesting? It's super interesting because in looking at it, I was concerned because you, I'm pretty sure you've noticed this before when looking at a Jelly Belly. It has this kind of glittery kind of sheen on the mm. outside. Because you mentioned that the middle is Turkish Delight, which... <laughs> Young me reading the line to Witch in the Wardrobe when they're like, we want Turkish Delight. I was like, what is that? <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Turkish and it's delightful. I was really concerned that all the color was just coming off. But in giving it a smell. It's got the aromatics of mimosa. And that's that's what we're starting out with is mimosa. Um, but what's really interesting, I think, is not only does uh, Turkish Delight kind of trace its confectionery candy lineage back to um like the 1700s if not later there's kind of some conflation on like who did what first because i mean that's just that's the food business sometimes sometimes you make a recipe and then sometimes it's just been a recipe that's been around but the first person who gets popular to make it is the one who gets known for it um and so the the Turkish delight uh, aspect of it, it's kind of like, is it from Greece? Is it from the Ottoman Empire? But the official sources say that you can at least trace the 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 references to that kind of candy back five hundred years to where that region, that general any particular place in that region. Perhaps a country that doesn't exist anymore, maybe? I don't know. Uh, again, it said, like, there's some sources that say it, uh, a person who was from Greece had developed it. There's some that say, like, a candy maker from uh, the Anato or Anatolian province or Anatolia uh, migrated to Istanbul and then opened up a candy shop there and then developed um, Turkish delights, which... The flavors of Turkish delights. Have you ever had? So I, because of my fascination in my young, my youth, with the line of witch in the wardrobe, with them wanting Turkish delight, I have had it, which is normally a, it's like a small candy coated in mm -hmm. cornstarch, 
It's like a little gummy candy. Yeah, it's like a little gummy. It's really just sugar and starch, mm -hmm. and it's coated in cornstarch so they don't stick together. Correct. Yeah, that is factual. But have you ever like eaten it? Uh, no, I have. You, I have. Did you like it? What was? I want your honest opinion. The, here's was the, it in good taste? Here's the problem uh, with Turkish delight. I think that there's too much starch in it. You know, yeah. um, it, it, it's 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 a little strange, but I've had different types of Turkish delight, and I've had Turkish delight that I've enjoyed. It's just like weird. It's like it's you eat so it, weird. And you eat it, and it's like you're biting into. Somebody took a little cornstarch, mixed it with some sugar slurry, <laughs> and then just made Formed it into, it into a, a, cube. a block. So, like the traditional flavors use, um, uh, what did I have here? Uh, rose water is like a main and uh, main flavor of it. They flavor it with roses, which that is, if you were to tell a kid now that this candy is rose flavored candy, they'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here! I want to eat sugar, not flowers." But uh, like having floral syrups was kind of a popular thing they would do like orange blossom mint uh mastic which i i don't i don't know what mastic is do you i know but i'm not gonna say oh you <sighs> <sighs> but um all this to say that turkish delight is the uh grandparent grand the forefather of um such candies as both jelly beans and gumdrops, um, but is distinctly different than other gummy candies on account of its just its texture and the way that it uses the sugar slurry with starch. And at the time, it, they didn't even have cornstarch. It wasn't it wasn't cornstarch. It initially was uh, dairy starch, um, like from evaporated milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which was uh, that's, I knew that that's kind of that's kind of fucking neat, <laughs> <laughs> neat, neat. Um, and then the other part that goes the other parent, the other branch of the family tree of Jelly Bellies. Um, now I might be butchering, uh, what it's called, but it's uh, Drage or Dragati, which is a bite-sized confection with a hard outer shell, and that just kind of refers to any sort of candy that has a hard candied shell. And it's most popularly associated with uh, Jordan almonds, which are like those Easter almonds. Yeah, I, lo like I love a, those. They're pretty good. They're fucking delicious. I love them. But they have that coat. Oh, but they have the hard they shell have coating. They have hard shell coating. And, you know, for those of you listening, M&M's. It's just, it's M&M's, it's Skittles, it's anything that has a hard shell coating. On Jordan them. almonds. It's Jordan Almond. Um, but that's what the uh, Dragati is referred to. And that can actually trace its uh, initial lineage back to, uh, what did I say? Um, like 170 BC in the uh, Roman Empire, there was a candy maker that they just happened to document that... Um, it was a candy maker who uh, would take like almonds and seeds and stuff and just roll them in honey a fuck ton. Mm -hmm. um, this process wasn't really popularized for like uh, commercial candy making until the 1700s in France. Um, but this refers to the process of having a uh, Dragati um, pot which is like those big spherical kind of side tilted at an axis. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Like if you ever watch how it's made, you know what I'm talking about. And they roll, they just kind of keep a consistent rolling and uh, tumbling of the, of the innards. And then you pour in the syrup and then it gradually coats the thing until it has a hard candy shell. That's fucking neat. This is jelly bellies can trace their lineage back almost 2000 years it has been a candy that has been millennia in the making but can they make history in my tummy oh they can make because i'm absolutely curious as to how this tastes well go ahead and try it out i already had a sip and i gotta say it's very impressive the way it was able to actually infuse 
the flavor. I was worried like you that it would end up being just like a it's leaching out the uh the color and that's the only reason why these glasses look different but no you Whoa. actually get some significant orange Whoa. mimosa kind of vibe Whoa. okay so tell them very interesting um it doesn't taste like a mimosa it doesn't but, but that's it, because it's mostly vodka it tastes like orange with bitter because they're obviously trying to emulate a mimosa. Mm. Um, I think it tastes like the Jelly Belly, which doesn't taste like a mimosa. It tastes like orange juice mm. with grapefruit juice. With a little but can I be mm-hmm. honest? This Can I be honest? Mm-hmm. This made an absolutely delicious little shot. That that was definitely interesting. But you're right. The Jelly Belly itself, it's kind of... T- oh, wait. Now, mm, there, so now wait, on the back end, on the back end of it, it has a, just a touch of like that brute dryness that you would get from a champagne so or Prosecco. There's definitely something inside of the Jelly Belly that is introducing that kind of dry, alcoholy flavor um, it doesn't, the, into it. The the Jelly Belly itself doesn't taste boozy. However, when you soak it in vodka and then drink the vodka, it's a tad bit boozy. I can't imagine why. Um, while we're while we're pouring up the uh, the Moscow Mule one, we're gonna go Which is over clear. It. Well, I mean a Moscow. Wait, no, this isn't the Moscow. This is the gin and tonic. Sorry, I misspoke. Gin and tonics are clear. How dare you? It would make sense. I judge the, you now. How dare you say something wrong? Only God can judge me. <laughs> Washing them feet. You know, Jesus washed feet. <laughs> you know, Jesus liked feet. He was real into feet. He was, Jesus was really into feet. Do you think they made a foot-flavored Jelly Belly? I have an opinion. I bet you they have. Because doesn't it feel God, like... I hope so. I feel like Jelly Belly... There's like two companies that are really big that make jelly beans. Mm-hmm. Um, what well, there's a few, but when I mean when I talk about specialty jelly beans, there's Jelly Belly, and there's another company whose name I can't remember now. The Jelly Bean Factory. It's the Jelly Bean Factory. That's they they do all the weird flavors. All of the information you are going to hear on this episode <laughs> is directly pulled from <laughs> the Jelly Belly website and the Jelly Belly Factory TM history website. And a little sprinkling of uh, Wikipedia. Um. <laughs> so if you didn't want to read it yourself, we'll read it for you. Exactly. And we're reading it here, right here, right now. Um, the gin and tonic one. This one I'm actually curious about because how are you going to replicate tonic in a jelly belly? That that seems like the gin. Okay, you add some juniper. You add a little citrus. You add like a touch of maybe one or two other aromatics. Um, but how are you gonna do? Qu- you just gonna do quinine <laughs> in it? Yes. Or, is that? It tastes to- like they quine. It tastes like they quinated a jelly bean. <laughs> it's a little bitter. It's obviously sweet because it's it's starch and sugar, so it is sweet. But they either quinated or they introduced a lot of the bittering agent. Whatever the bittering agent that they used in the mimosa. Whoa. Is here significantly. Whoa! Am I what? am I bugging out? How does it how does it taste like that? That okay? That's the gin, crazy. The gin and tonic. If I didn't know any better, if this were a carbonated beverage, I would say yeah, that's a gin and tonic. If I said to you like Chandler, oh, man, I'm not feeling good. I started making a gin and tonic. I, I put a little tonic in this gin. You'd be like, hmm, hmm. not the best gin, not the best tonic. It's a little flat, but but that's a gin and tonic. It feels and tastes <laughs> kind of like a gin and tonic. But I think a gin and tonic, let's be fair, um, a gin and tonic is one of my favorite drinks, right? I think that tonic is sweet. It's bitter. It's interesting. And with tonic, of course, like a London, like a London dry gin or like an American dry gin or like a slow gin, they all have this nice kind of, like dryness on the back. It, they're all bitter, which I'm a 
big fan of bitter, and they're all kind of floral, I think that they've gotten away with it by introducing just so much bitter and, and a little bit of that quinine. A quinine, quinine. It's quinine. the quinine and it's the botanicals because they nailed the gin flip. Like, that's a pretty replicable flavor of gin if you have enough juniper and stuff. What really got me is the fact that there is a genuine quinine tonic y flavor to that. I was not expecting because I'm like, okay, this is it's a two ingredient thing. Like, how are you gonna how are you gonna pare down something that simple? That's I'm I'm genuinely impressed. Wow, Jelly Belly. Wow. Wow. Color me okay. uh, flattered. I have, that, I have to I have to read I have to see. What is what going you, on? What are you looking for? The ingredients. They're not gonna that's proprietary. You're right. It's all like artificial flavoring. I'm wondering what the bittering the bittering agent they use is. Because remember, when it comes to these, it's not so much just making it taste like the thing. It's complex science, right? Yeah. So they they calculate in like the base sweetness of the product, right? Obviously. Hey. You can't spell mystery without chemistry. It's true. Wait, that was supposed to be. Never mind. You know what it <laughs> sounds like, right? You, like, you know what it tastes like. You know what the base product tastes like. Then you go, what are the characteristics of gin? People don't understand because they're not really thinking sometimes. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you. You understand it's you. A lot of people don't. They're not thinking critically. They're not sitting there drinking their drink going, I wonder. Oh, actually, what's making it taste like that is... The bitter. But I feel like gin drinkers, especially like craft gin drinkers, are really invested in like the botanicals that are used. And so I feel like this is, I don't, you know, they're not using like Empress gin or they're not using like Monkey 47. It's like Seagram's. It's like Seagram's. It's like flat um, vintage tonic, you know. It's, it's but it's got just enough of like a citrus peel. To be honest, I'm going in for another one because uh, between the good. two, this is the one. That's uh, I tick I tick me off as a fan, or it, it ticks my boxes is what I'm trying to say. So now um, we're hitting the pomegranate mimosa. No, sorry, no. pomegranate Cosmo. Cosmo, which I personally, ever since Sex in the City, uh huh, right? I'm a Samantha. I know. But I'm gonna settle down. It's gonna happen. Um, I've I've always found a Cosmo to be interesting one because when it comes to like setting aside like gender norms, people always didn't want to drink or didn't like Cosmos because they're too effeminate, too feminine. It's pink. It's a pink what? drink. I can't believe it. When in reality, what you're getting is you know liquor and a really a Cosmo mix. If you're really kind of going yeah. anywhere. So I'm just going to put, I'm going to bet. So, you know, I'm putting my, myself on a limb here. It's going to taste like a Cosmo because a Cosmo is sugar. <laughs> here's, here's my thing with this drink. Um, it, it already feels a bit redundant because grenadine, which is a feature in Cosmo mix, is made of pomegranate. It's a pomegranate sort excuse me. Grenadine is a pomegranate syrup. Grenadine is used in Cosmo. Calling something a pomegranate Cosmo is a bit redundant. Okay, what is happening? Didn't so. One, I, I need you to pay attention to this. The uh, mimosa didn't fully dissolve. Mm. Mm -hmm. The gin and tonic did. Mostly, a little bit more. There's a couple little beans at the bottom. More than the mimosa. I think the Cosmo has done the least. Uh, I think, this is my personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong because I'm not weighing it. This is my personal opinion, visually looking at it. I think that the gin and the Cosmo look like a similar amount. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think there's a little bit, actually, I think there's a little bit more in the mimosa now. Now that actually, I look at it. Would you would you pour one of those beans? Just just give me them. Give me. I knew that like was gonna a couple happen. Of them, them them beans in there. Oh, Ooh, that's good. Um, as I've already tasted it, I'm gonna just swirl them. I'm not gonna around. say nothing. I need Chandler, Chandler. Please let me know what you think this delicious pomegranate Cosmo. 
jelly be- jelly belly. That's like saying an orange mimosa. We're not sponsored. It's an or- If you want to pay us. A pomegranate Cosmo is like saying an orange mimosa or a lime margarita. No. Take a sip. I'm, <clears throat> I think that Chandler is underestimating the level of pomegranate. Oh, yeah. Look at Tell me, this tastes like fucking pomegranate straight you up. You know what? I was taking it for pomegranate. And it's that actually that that comes through very well. But it doesn't taste like a Cosmo. It doesn't taste like a Cosmo. I think okay, this may just be on us. If we let this actually infuse for like a solid twenty four hours and let the full jelly bean dissolve, I think this would taste like a Cosmo. I think this would be a uh, an infusible like this. This is a cocktail in a jelly bean. Taste the taste the jelly bean. I think that it tastes very similar. Mm-hmm. No review of the jelly bean. Mm. Well, that just tastes like grenadine with a little splash of lemon. And that's what this tastes like. So it doesn't taste like a Cosmo. It tastes like a little bit of a citrusy pomegranate flavor. No, but that's the beauty of it. The this one isn't undercut by any like. It's not trying to emulate gin. It's not trying to emulate a champagne. It's just trying to be pomegranate and lime. And if you were to do that and let all of these soak in vodka for an extended amount of time, you have a Cosmo. Because that's what a, a Cosmo is just vodka, grenadine, lemon, or sour mix or whatever the fuck. But you could, in theory, let this sit in a neutral spirit for an extended amount of time. And then I think in that time, you would have a servable, a drinkable and servable uh, little cocktail, at least a shooter. I think that you would have something worth mixing. Ooh. What would you mix it with? I'd just put the Jelly Belly into a Cosmo. You would just put the whole infused vodka? No, I'd just put, it, put a Jelly Belly into a Cosmo. You would make a Cosmo and then just kind of garnish it with a jelly If I was really being fancy that I would do it to the vodka, but... uh, I think it would be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I think you're overestimating the cocktail flavor level of these Jelly Belly. Here, let me me, me break it down for you, okay? Uh These infused in vodka do not taste... Like the cocktail. They taste like a mimosa flavored jelly bean, a gin and tonic flavored jelly bean, a pomegranate flavored jelly bean, and vodka. Which is not bad. No, but that's the thing. A Cosmo is vodka and pomegranate. And so, the because we're already halfway there with our neutral alcohol, there's not enough sugar. Oh, um, that's probably what it is. There's not enough sugar for us because if it was a bit more sugar and citric acid, I think that's the other. That's the other. Oh, okay. Hold on. Give that a whiff. Wow, that is a freaking Moscow Mule. Goodness, and the coloration on that—that that got some, some good. Uh... Okay, I do have an opinion. The half soaked jelly beans are kind of weird. They're not, they're a little slimy. They're not bad, but I think that like it'd be better if they just dissolved fully. Yeah. But I, again, I think that's on us. I think if we were to have allowed these jelly beans the adequate time to, uh, to completely dissolve, then. I think we'd end up with a with a very different review of them. Well, how about this? If you want to see any of these dissolved fully into a neutral spirit, let us know in the comment section below. Um, while you're trying that one, I'm going to just start because I have, dude, I got so much to talk about. I need to trauma dump your jelly belly stuff because I have a lot of, I need to, I need to, I need to. Get the, my thoughts straight about this. Entertain the people. 
I'm not even trauma dumping right now. I've been on like three, maybe four, maybe six school field trips. You're about to, to be trauma dumping. To the Jelly Belly factory. And I tell you, if you go to the Jelly Belly factory and you don't leave with the uh, the belly, a bag of belly flops, which is what they call the imperfect jelly beans, um, then you're doing it wrong. Because one, not only do you get a fuck ton of jelly beans for like the low, low price of like, I don't know, five bucks. And it's like a six pound bag. That's like less than a dollar a bag. I've done the math. But you also get certain jelly beans will come out in like little um, duplicates or like little little sandwich together. And so you may end up with a flavor that is unknown to the rest of the Jelly Belly consumer world. You can end up with something that's like uh, a red licorice and a black licorice, or you can end up with like a root beer buttered popcorn, or you could end up with like a tutti frutti very cherry that have just been kind of like fused together due to the tumbling process and all of all of that stuff or you just end up with like a toasted marshmallow that's like four jelly bellies long and then it's it, that's that's honestly the gold that's that's the gold mine you have you have struck jelly belly gold when you have hit toasted marshmallow that has two or more um conjoined uh, jelly bellies together and that's what that's what it's all about that's mm-hmm. why we play mm-hmm. the game that's why we <laughs> that's why we do this shit but I, I i've gone on this tour like easily four times at the yeah. gym yeah most of them through school there was this one time that um my uh my aunt and uncle and cousins were visiting mm-hmm. and uh mm-hmm. and they're from nevada and they don't have jelly belly nevada. factories there and <laughs> Listen, as someone from the West Coast, if you say Nevada as Nevada, pull your head out of your ass. Get <laughs> your head out of your ass. Come on. Nevada. Um, no, but so we were like, we were going to the Jelly Belly factory, and it's on this kind of like spindly road that goes through the, the hills in uh, Fairfield, and you pass an Ashley Furniture store, um, and it's like Ashley Furniture store off the side of the road, and then... Like one or two stops up is the Jelly Belly, is the exit to Jelly Belly Lane. Well, there is my family with a carload of like eight people in a minivan. Some of us got to pee. Some of us are getting real car sick. And then some of us are just like bored out of their gourd. And for some reason, whoever was driving just kept missing the exit and so we had to i swear loop around (laughs) like it was a weird i think what i think happened actually was there was construction on the regular exit and so there was like a detour exit up ahead but the way anyway we're we end up circling like four or five times Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. my little cousin at the time He's like in his mid twenties now, but yeah. at the time he was like five or six, and he goes, "How many Ashley Furniture stores are on this drive?" <laughs> and it was the most passive aggressive. <laughs> it's like, hmm. <laughs> uh, so everyone in this car was disgruntled until that kid said this. Well, I. <laughs> She looks familiar. Wow, there's wow. so many Ashley Furniture stores. Mm. <laughs> and everyone else started busting up except my mom who was driving, and she turned <laughs> around. And she's like, "Hey, I'll have none of that." <laughs> um, we eventually found the elusive Jelly Belly factory, but after you know, everyone in their in the car had wet themselves from laughing so hard. Um, Carson was known for his great one-liners and observational comedy. He's in finance now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hmm. Well, you know what's really funny? Huh? These uh, end-of-year reports. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get a load of these T-16s. Am I right? <laughs> While you're tasting this, I have to go on a whole rant about how I think the Moscow Mule... Jelly bean, jelly bean, the jelly belly, and the infused vodka doesn't 
tastes like a Moscow mule, but it also does because it only tastes like ginger ale. It tastes like a ginger soda or a ginger beer, but because we put it in vodka, huh? It it's kind of come full circle. That's because taste huh. taste the okay. jelly bean. Yeah, the jelly belly. I don't know if it's a trademark. We're not sponsored. It tastes straight like. Whatever, I'm going to be honest, they they put some bittering agent that's obvious in all of them to give it an alcohol taste. But that's ginger and lime. But this is ginger and lime. Because we put it inside of vodka, it tastes... It completed the circuit. It just completed the circuit. It's great. At first, I sipped it and I go, huh, this is just ginger. And then I went with vodka. And then I was like, oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. You know what? I feel they're, like they're missing the mint garnish. I tell you that. Conspiracy theory. I think Jelly Belly did this. What, what do you Maybe mean? Maybe not this, but they either took it and I listen. You're a master distiller, you're a master taster, you're a master jelly beaner. This is what you do. You take it, you take your recipe. You get yourself a Moscow mule. Take a bite. Drink a little water, maybe a little, little maybe a little something. Then you get a little vodka. Maybe make, make a little actual, make an actual Moscow mule. Take a little sip. This was coordinated. <laughs> I'm triggered. This was this was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was plotted. I, this was planned. I want to be Frank, not James. Chandler wrote me. He said, there's two, there's two options. Do all the cocktails, which I still, I still think that's a really good idea. I'm thinking maybe we should save some of these. Maybe do that for a short video. Because I think that's such a cool, good idea to do that. So I leapt on that because that's a better idea than this. <laughs> you make this is good, is but good. you you make all the cocktails. Mm -hmm. You get to taste the cocktails. You get to taste the jelly beans. You get to go. Oh, that's how it tastes. Really, you know, similar. You're like, oh, I get where they were going with it. I am floored. I am astounded. This is why, whenever you make, uh, you have opinions, or you give it, I always I go, I'm gonna go with that, because we don't always know or recognize. The, you know, because we have, like, our preferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not the thing that I would have done. I'm glad. Be Satisfied. Specifically from the Moscow Mule Jelly Belly? Yeah, I think it's, it's because specifically it tastes so much like a ginger ale or a ginger beer that it feels like this was made for people to go and be like, I want to have this with. So they buy it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know that, what I mean? That is the most spot on true to form cocktail flavored jelly belly but that is, I think of the of the of the lineup so far. But in a weird way. Because it's not directly. Mm -mm. Right? It's not directly. It's like it's taking a roundabout. It's seeing a lot of <laughs> actually furniture stores. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see a little bit of more Ashley furniture, okay? All right, this is this is the last one of the of the tasting table. Oh, you, oh, share the wealth, share the love event. That's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. You know, can I? I will say though, drink water. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Was this in good taste? Behind the bar, tasting table, and be honest, don't remember. Wait, but do, <laughs> did you smell this though? Oh wow! Yeah, what? Okay, so first, what do we? What is? Which one is this? Because we didn't say this was a margarita. This is le Mar margarita. <laughs> Ooh, wow. that's the ASMR for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but like this has gotten me. Listen, you ever have two of these? Yeah, you know why. You, you got two cocktail uh, jelly bellies in you. You can't drive home. 
That <laughs> them's the rules. Don't drink and drive. Seriously, don't. That's yeah, whack. Don't but do like, that. Like, hey, don't do it. Man, it's America should really beef up its public transportation. Otherwise, like drinking and driving is kind of the only option a lot of people have. Because like sometimes Uber just stops doing stuff after us, and like small towns. This is me advocating for more um, public transportation and opportunities at low cost for the public to have transportation. Um, not me advocating. You've been for in New York too long. Yeah, I really oh. have, dude. The the luxury of being able to like go somewhere. Get shit faced and then just take a train back. Ugh, love it. I go, I go back home. I gotta, I gotta call an Uber to go thirty minutes away just to the suburbs. Fuck that. It's awful. I hate it. What are you looking at? Why are you so aggressively handling that box? Excuse me, Jelly Belly Candy Company. How, how dare you? <gasps> How dare you put such lime-ish flavor into this? I get it now. Lime-ish? These taste like mixers. Oh. These don't taste wait, no, like wait. the cocktail. This is, but wait, no, but the, this is, okay, now you're on what I was thinking. Because yeah. I was like, if these if these jelly bellies taste like mixers, if we infuse them into a spirit... Yeah. It'll just taste like you mixed the spirit into, or you mixed the mixer into the spirit. Right? It's obviously not quite right, but I think that like taking this infused vodka, throwing this into a margarita, it'd get buried. That's the reality mm. because there's too much sweetness inside of a margarita. But doing this, if you went, took me to a bar and you rely, okay, not me. Okay, but if you were to take the lay person, not because not be, <laughs> just such an, not because it's just that I don't, I'm not a big shots person. I'm not. I don't really like to do shots <laughs> since when, you know. <laughs> but if I were to do a shot, or like like back in the early 2000s, go to the Continental in St. Marks and in Manhattan, and they were like, "Oh, we have a margarita shot," and they serve this to me, thumbs up. Oh, really? Because I, what I think when it comes to the shot, it's boo. This is boozy. We've created. I, I gotta taste it now. So, we've uh, created boozy, sweet shots that are reminiscent of cocktails that we know and we love. So yes, this doesn't taste like prosecco. Okay. Th th this doesn't taste like Prosecco. This doesn't taste like fucking a gin and tonic. This doesn't taste like a pineapple Cosmo. This doesn't taste like a Moscow Mule. And this does not taste like a margarita. But it tastes close enough mm. that if you could sell this with a house, with a well whiskey. Whiskey? For $10. Sorry, well... <clears throat> With a, had too many of these. With a well vodka, you could sell one of these in a well vodka for ten dollars. Here, here's my here's here's my constructive criticism, not for Jelly Belly, but for us. We put margarita jelly beans in vodka, and what we should have done, what we could have done was put them in tequila. Now, you imagine this jelly bean being infused in tequila. That's a fucking winner. That's a fucking A1. I agree. I agree. That's, that's doing something. That's putting points on the board. I've been doing a thing where I've been... I, I take a sip. I taste it. Then I taste the jelly bean. Then I take a sip. When you take the sip with the jelly bean, you kind of get it. But again, it does it, have just the littlest reminiscent of tequila in the jelly bean. But the problem is, is that these are all just Turkish delight. <laughs> but that's not bad. Because 
I like a jelly bean. But as a person, I'm vegan. I don't really talk about that on a podcast because it's not the kind of thing that I like do a lot, talk about a lot. But like I eat a lot of ca- I eat candy. All vegan candy is Turkish delight. Yeah. All vegan candy is like a starch and a sugar. Now, because we live in a modern age, they do different stuff. They do agar agar, you know what mm. I mean? They they do different formulations. Agar agar sounds like a Pokemon. I know, right? Is it agar agar? Oh. You know, they do agar. Agar. <laughs> they do different formulations. Right? Yeah. So they don't all have the same texture. Things have gotten pretty interesting, pretty good. This, if I was just eating the Jelly Belly Cocktail Classic straight up, no. Really? I, here's the, the reality. How much was this? I don't know. It was a Christmas gift. It was Santa, a Christmas gift? Santa got it for me. You got, you got Google, right? I'm good. Tell me. <laughs> You got Google. How yeah, much? Sure I got Google. How much is the original gourmet jelly bean? The cocktail classics. I'm going to say. Let's see what we got here. We got one, two, three, four, five flavors. This is between fifteen and twenty dollars. Final answer. I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say between. Can can I get a little leeway? I'm gonna say fifteen to seventeen. So if you were to get in this an assorted bag of these, what would you guess? Like they're what's not, the weight? What's the weight? Um, let's say let's say this is four. This is four point two five ounces or one hundred twenty grams. Then let's say like three ounces. Three ounces, fifteen bucks. So this box retail nine dollars. Hmm. Okay. I ran into a bit of a problem in my thoughts because it says gourmet jelly bean, but it's jelly belly. That's the thing. All jelly belly are gourmet jelly beans. You could are see you this kidding? anywhere. Is jelly belly is nothing no. but gourmet. You want name brand jelly beans? Go to jelly belly. I, I said the five dollar difference because that's usually the up, the upcycle, the upcharge on things like this. Yeah. But I guess if this is really five dollars, then it's ten. You know, what I, you, you see my yeah. logic. You yeah, know what okay, I mean? I see what you mean. My logic was that, like, you know, they were throwing on a huge upcharge because this, but they have, but like, uh, silly. They they have lots of these. So like, if you didn't have the like luxury of. The box, the separating of the flavors, the like. Oh, I mean, the, if you first the, of all, if you threw these, if you threw the, if you threw everything that came in here into a bag and gave them to me, I'd be like, oh, that's too, that's too nah, was too much. If I threw all of these into a bag and then said it was seven point five ounces, so twice the volume of these, how much would you say that was? I bet you that's I bet you that's less than fifteen dollars now. That is nine sixty four on Amazon. Yeah, because that's the fucking problem. It's hard to gauge these. It's hard to gauge when you see the box and it says classics because this is okay, okay. Jelly Belly. Wait, but big it's, brand. It's not that the Jelly Bellies are classic. It's the cocktails are classics. That's the thing. It's their classic <gasps> cocktails. Hold on. So you mean? That- Let's be real. The box is like three dollars. The box is not really three dollars. The box is seventy cents, but shipping with the box like this. Yeah, and uh, and a uh, and a plastic like this, and a partition like this. This is like I I put my fucking foot in it are you kidding me this is luxury this is this is like five dollars this is less than five dollars cost i gotta tell you the cosmo ones just by themselves are a tasty little morsel i cannot believe i dropped my mic what the fuck 
Fun fact, Turkish delight in um in Turkish or like in uh you know whatever it's called in the place that it's made uh is called lokum L O lokum lokum L O K U M yeah it's lokum and it means morsel I don't really know that I just said that or mouthful what what language is that like Turkish Okay, I was just a part of Turkey. Just yeah, he doesn't know. The Turkey's complex. It's Istanbul. It's, I did my research. I, again, <laughs> Anatolian migrated to Istanbul within the Ottoman Empire, 1700s. Said, you know what? I'll start making this starch. And that's uh, that's that's Turkish delight. I didn't even get into the history of jelly beans. We we have just been trying to. What are we looking at time wise? You know what do that I, sounds do like. I, you do know I that... have time to get into? You don't. You know what that <gasps> sounds like? That sounds like, with enough likes, you're gonna get a jelly bean episode. Mm, bro, I, want, I did so much research. No, no. For you didn't jelly. do enough. I did so much. You didn't do enough. I I went on Google and I typed in history of jelly beans and then I said, "Okay, how about I copy and paste it?" And but then you know the and then I thought, "You know what? Instead of copying <laughs> and pasting, I'm going to actually condense it into my own words." And so I have like notes on notes Unfortunately, on notes. the premise is at an hour was that in good taste? Damn. Half an hour behind the bar. 15 minutes. It's just a taste. It's just a taste. You hit an hour. We already hit an hour. Are we've you, hit an hour. Are you kidding me? Are you Where are You know, we've hit an hour. So you know what that says to me? If you like this. If you comment on this. You want more. And you subscribe to this. Especially that. I will say, okay, hold on. I gotta stop eating these. I want to do, do especially I do more content with these. Gonna put these to shine. Mm, fucking good. But I have to say that I think that the of the jelly belly, you might have to eat one more. Don't close it yet. Oh, uh-huh. because I think the mimosa one's the best one as a pure jelly bean. You think the mimosa one's the best one as a pure jelly? Because bean? hold on, let's be fair. Okay. And this is the thing I love, and I appreciate about Chandler's with different people. We have similar tastes, but not the same. Mm. Mm. I Wait, like we're, we're different people. <sighs> Shit, I've been operating as if <laughs> I love bitter. You love bitter. But we like bitter in different ways. Yeah. I think the mimosa jelly bean is A+. plus. It's bitter. The sweetness is like kind of it's kind of there, but it's it's riding. It's simple. Well, let me ask you this. Which jelly bean do you think is the most true to the cocktail it's trying to emulate? I'm 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 doing them all in the wall. Cause I'm gonna say my opinion. Whoa. I think the gin and tonic jelly belly is the most like if I were having a bag of assorted jelly bellies and I ate the gin and tonic one, I would be like, oh shit, that's a gin and tonic. Well damn. Gin and tonic, looks like a cocktail. Moscow Mule, looks like a mixer. Ooh, that's that is an accurate take. Yeah, I because gin and tonic tastes like <laughs> tastes like ginger. So it tastes so, like ginger and lime. So ginger and lime plus sugar, ginger ale, ginger beer, done. Boom. Um, the gin and tonic, I think it's because whatever the bittering agent. It's quinine. It's. I've said it a lot. It is. 
gotta be quinine. But they've had. I think that they had to have quinated a little bit. Listen, Jelly Belly. I want you to reach out to us, and if you don't reach out to us, I'm gonna reach out to you first, so I can figure out what the fuck is in this gin and tonic, Jelly Belly. <laughs> I can't believe you made an hour. This is a fun little uh, experiment that we did. Everything's an experiment. I it's so I want to take a second right before we wrap up and talk about how we look and where we are. Yeah. Because it's a new year and we're doing a lot to try to make this into something. So please let us know in the comments what you think because we're trying to grow this into something sustainable something real and something where we connect with you we painted that's what that's what we're getting at we we repainted the studio we're trying to it's make still things wet, right? it's better. still wet back there. i don't want to touch <laughs> We're, we're trying the so hard here. to <laughs> make this like an official studio. Like me. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Because uh, we put a lot of hard work, grit, and determination. And not to mention grit. It's not done yet. It's not done. It's not done. Look and at this lighting. Look at look at how bioluminescent <laughs> look how, you look. Know, you know, watch out. Can I say? And this is important, which is that we do this. For two reasons. I'm going to speak for myself, but I think I've known you long enough to know that in a weird way, the minute that I mentioned that I did a podcast, you were into it. You were inter entertained by it. You wanted to do it. And I think that ever since we've done it, that this is something that we've loved. I love it. I appreciate it. Because I get to do it with somebody that I care about. I get to do it with somebody that I love. And I get to do it in front of you. I fall more in love with you every day. <laughs> oh, my God. My girlfriend's going to be like, I can't. <laughs> she, I, she, she already knows. <laughs> yeah, she's, she already knows. Yeah, she's, always that, like, she's always like, this oh, takes precedent. Oh, God. <laughs> You're going to leave me for him, aren't you? <laughs> And you said, I don't got to go anywhere. I don't have to leave anyone. <laughs> I feel lucky. The best thing about being a part of Was That In Good Taste is getting to do it with people I care about and in front of people that I care about. This is the beginning of something I hope special because I'm willing to pour everything into it and... All I need you to do is watch. It's the start of something <laughs> new. Don't know whatever else I'm gonna do. Okay, we need to stop eating these because I want to make. I'm. I want to use them for my personal TikTok content, but I'm just gonna. Just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> he paid for them, but I'm like, hey, I'm. Gonna I didn't pay for. It was from Santa. Okay, okay, if Santa gave you a gift and I co-opted, is that nice? That's not nice. That's nice. I gave... I, 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 I sh No, here's the thing. We both get good boy points because I shared <laughs> and you, like, enjoyed them. And so we're both, we're both on the nice list. Um, Chandler? Yeah. If people were going to go see you... Yeah. Where can they find you? And what do you do? You can catch me on uh, Chandler Does Jokes or at Chandler Does Jokes on Instagram. Um, I'm also going to be starting a new sketch uh, TikTok channel with some of my roommates, and it's going to be called The Fifth Bedroom. Um, okay, so I'm going to be managing the ones that in good taste <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> no, with some help uh, from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be helping with that too. But like, got <laughs> 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 the butt by accident. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be getting out there. I'm gonna be doing stuff. Also, uh, just comedy stuff around uh, Brooklyn and um, uh, what is it? Easy Lover. I I pop up at a lot. So like, yeah, follow me. At uh, Chandler Does Jokes, and um, that's both on Instagram and TikTok, because, you know, consolidating the brand. 
And then uh, was that in good taste? Because that's that's our whole thing. It's the main thing. Of course, of course, as always, <laughs> if you want to find me, would you suggest you do? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find it's me. It's on escargot. <laughs> 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 Jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find me, what I suggest you do is look in the show notes. You're going to see a link to the link tree. You're going to find a few things. One, a link to the Wrestling With Friends podcast, as well as my TikTok at living underscore dad underscore joke on TikTok, as well as... <laughs> That's so smooth. <laughs> wait, wait. I was on uh, Wrestling With you Friends. You were on yeah, Wrestling so With you Friends. Can, you can see content I do, too, occasionally on Wrestling With Friends because wrestling is better with, with friends. friends. It's so funny because that's going to be happening, I think, going forward either every Saturday or Sunday. All you got to do is go to Linktree because, remember, drinking is not required. But it is recommended. Oh, man. Ah, oh, oh, that was good. Oh man. Oh. Yeah.